Once all Africans could fly like birds, but owing to their many transgressions, their wings were taken away. There remained here and there in the sea islands and out of the way places in the low country, some who had been overlooked and had retained the power of flight, though they looked like other men. There was a cruel master on one of the sea islands who worked his people till they died. When they died, he bought others to take their places. These also he killed with overwork in the burning summer sun through the middle hours of the day, although this was against the law. One day, when all the worn-out Negroes were dead of overwork, he bought, of a broker in the town, a company of native Africans just brought into the country and put them at once to work in the cotton field. He drove them hard. They went to work at sunrise and didn't stop until dark. They were driven with unsparing harshness all day long. Men, women, children. There was no pause for rest during the unendurable heat of the midsummer noon, though trees were plenty and near. But through the hardest hours, when fair plantations gave their Negroes rest, this man's driver pushed the work along without a moment's stop for breath until all grew weak with heat and thirst. There was among them one young woman who had lately borne a child. It was her first. She hadn't fully recovered from bearing, and she shouldn't have been sent to the field until her strength had come back. She had her child with her, as the other women had, a straddle on her hip or piggyback. The baby cried. She spoke to quiet it. The driver couldn't understand her words. She took her, her breast with her hand and threw it over her shoulder that the child might suck and mm. be content. Then she went back to chopping knot grass. But being very weak and sick with the great heat, she stumbled, slipped, and fell. The driver struck her with his lash until she rose and staggered on. She spoke to an old man near her, the oldest man of them all, tall and strong with a forked beard. He replied, but the driver couldn't understand what they said. Their talk was strange to him. She returned to work, but in a little while she fell again. Again the driver lashed her until she got to her feet. Again she spoke to the old man, but he said, not yet, daughter, not yet. So she went on working until she was very ill. Soon she stumbled and fell again. But when the driver came running with his lash to drive her on with her work, she turned to the old man and asked, Is it time yet, Daddy? He answered, Yes, daughter. The time has come. Go, and peace be with you. And he stretched out his arms toward her. So, with that, she leaped straight up into the air and was gone like a bird, flying over field and wood. When it was just too hard, Maria? And as he spoke to them, they all remembered what they had forgotten. I love that sentence. They all mm -hmm. remembered what they had mm -hmm. forgotten. And the master, the overseer, and the driver looked after them as they flew beyond the wood, beyond the river, miles on miles, until they passed beyond the last rim of the world and disappeared in the sky like a handful of leaves. They were never seen again. Uh, and then we hear where they went, I do not know. I never was told, nor what it was that the old man had said. That I've forgotten. But as he went over the last fence, he made a sign in the master's face and cried, Kuliba, Kuliba, I don't know what that means.